The Obama administration denied a permit Sunday that would have completed the last leg of the Dakota Pipeline project, prompting celebrations in the Cannonball North Dakota camps where the numbers of supporters of the Standing Rock Sioux tribe had swelled to over 5,000. Joining us now to discuss is the chairman of the Standing Rock Sioux, Dave Archambault II. Dave, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us on this busy day for you. What are your thoughts right now after the last minute move by President Obama? Well, I have a, a sense of relief because this was something that we've been trying to uh, educate a, a lot of people about. And uh, for the first time, it feels like we are being heard. You know, we, for, for the past two years, we've been telling uh, senators, we've been telling congressmen, we've been telling the governor of, the, of North Dakota, we told the, the Dakota Access Pipeline staff, and, and we also told uh, energy transfer partners that this, this can't happen. And, and uh, we, we try to express that early on, but it seemed like nobody heard us. And so we continue to build awareness. And finally, uh, for the first time yesterday, it, it feels like somebody actually heard us. And now, Dave, thousands of protesters fill the camps there, including hundreds of U.S. military veterans who came over the weekend. Can you tell us what the mood is there right now? Did anyone get any sleep last night? Are people beginning to go home? You know, I think it's uh, it's um, still uh, a happy time for everybody. You know, they're celebrating, and uh, there's also a sense of fear that this is is not reality. Uh, but it is. It, it's it's true, and uh, the right decision was made by the government. And it's going to be a decision that's hard to unwind. So mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. feel like there's anything going to happen. And it's time now for uh, uh, the people that we appreciate, uh, that we were so thankful they came to stand with us. It's time for them to go home now. So you say it would be difficult to unwind. Donald Trump's team is now saying that the president-elect will review the issue once he's in office. But you're not worried about what might happen in January? No, I think it's an uh, opportunity for uh, myself or for the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe or for tribal nations to sit down and, and start the conversation with the, the president-elect and, and start sharing and building awareness about uh, what has happened to our people, what has happened to the first occupants of this country uh, over time, and and help them realize that this is a real uh, the right decision and it's not uh, that we're trying to stop infrastructure projects altogether. We're just trying to uh, stop paying for those projects. Uh, this great nation was built off of our backs and it can't continue to happen. So uh, it's an opportunity for us to, and I welcome right. uh, a discussion with the, the president elect. So could all of this have been avoided from the beginning if the Standing Rock Sioux tribe had just been consulted during the pipeline planning process? Yeah, I think the problem with uh, the policy is consultation uh, in general. Uh, it's, it's a form to check off the box. And what really needs to happen is when these infrastructure projects cross our treaty lands, that uh, we have to have the opportunity to give consent. And uh, that's what the rest of the world does with indigenous peoples and their rights. So uh, we're striving to change the policies. Uh, and, and, I, and I see a bright future for indigenous peoples around the world because of, of this movement. Absolutely. Now, talking about this specific situation, we understand that your main objections were worries over water supply contamination and the destruction of sacred burial grounds. Is that correct? What has already been destroyed? So uh, the path of the pipeline destroyed pretty much everything, but it's not just a sacred site that concerns us. Uh, it's a sacred place. Where this pipeline crosses is a valley that's uh, rich with cultural uh, heritage, cultural sites, and it's a place. And that's what is being uh, threatened. And it's not just the, the, the culture, but it's our heritage, it's our people, our environment, and our water that's being threatened. And as the first people of this country, uh, we should have every right to express our concerns. And, and we do have every right to stand up against uh, something that is legal, but it's absolutely wrong. Mm -hmm. So this was also a question of respect, of respecting the sovereignty of tribal lands, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. So going forward, what would you like to see be done differently so that this doesn't happen again to the Standing Rock Sioux or to another tribal nation? Oh, we're, we, want, we need to address the, the, the laws that are in place now. We need to uh, change uh, the policies that allow for this uh, 
type of infrastructure project to encroach on our sacred places, our culture and our heritage. And I think this is a, a door, a, a window that has been opened and uh, we need to take advantage of it and we need to build relationships with uh, whatever administration is in office, whatever uh, uh, congressional represent, rep representations are there. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to continue and strengthen um, our awareness and our relationships with everyone. To create that dialogue. Now, as far as you know, has an alternate route for the pipeline already been planned? Are you okay with it? I, I don't, I'm not aware of any, and that's a good question for the company. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. What I would just express is that uh, we should have uh, the opportunity to consent if it's going to cross our treaty lands and, and our treaty laws, our treaty constitutional law uh, is the law of the land, and, and we should be given that, uh, afforded that opportunity to express that. Absolutely. Now, most of the protesting had been peaceful, but there had been some violence. What is the worst of what you've seen? And we understand that as many as 500 people were arrested. Do you have any word on their fate? Um, <clears throat> the, the people who have been arrested uh, will, will probably go through the court process. And the worst that I've seen uh, right, was somebody... Uh, chained to a piece of equipment. You know, there's a, a civil disobedience act, and it's it's meant to build awareness. Um, but if you think about the, the situation and, and where we're at, the, the type of force that was used against um, um, activists or protesters or water protectors has been escalating. So this decision that was rendered rendered yesterday is comes at, at a, a good time to so that we can assure that uh, safety and um, uh, people are are no longer getting harmed. And so, what what is next for you? A, a little rest? Well, I think it's a uh, uh, time to assure our members and assure uh, all the water protectors that uh, this pipeline and this company will not move forward, um, at least during this winter. So it's it's time for them to go home and enjoy this uh, winter with their families, enjoy the, the holidays if they celebrate holidays with their families, and um, uh, be assured that we'll continue to uh, build awareness about uh, the decision that was made and, and uh, convince people that this is the right decision for not just Standing Rock, not just Indigenous people, but it's the right decision for this country, and it's a right decision for this world. Well, this must feel like an amazing holiday gift for your people. Thank you so much, Dave Archambault, for talking to us today. Yep, thank you. And we have reached out several times to North Dakota Governor Jack Darrell Impel as well, but his office has not yet responded.